So if you like to model your rooms using the snap to grid command, the first thing we want to do is set up our grid and make sure that the spacing of our grid is appropriate to how we want to model. So there's three different ways where you can ex access the Rhino settings for grid. Uh, you can go to the tool menu and go all the way to the bottom, you see options. You can also go to your window and if you click on the little um, triangle, you can go down to display options. And the last way to do it is to use the command line and type in options. All three of those will bring you to the Rhino options. And the grid settings are all the way at the top. And once you click on grid in the table of contents, the settings will appear on the right hand side. So I currently have my show grid lines, grid axis, and world axes turned off. You can turn them on if you like having the visual grid accessible for you. Um, and then uh, you can play, uh, I'll turn it on for now so you can see if I were to increase um, the minor grid line spacing, so that's going to be your smallest grid line, it will change how, it, how you see it. So if I change that to 5 meters, it gets much bigger. But um, I'm going to leave it to a small size so that I can have more control over the size of my rooms. Um, and you can also change your major lines. So like you can, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but um, as you increase it, that changes. Uh, for now, you can keep it at the default. And I'm going to turn my grid back off. And then the last thing is the grid snapping. So this is where you can dictate whether or not you want your snapping to occur with your grid spacing or if you want it to be greater like this by default is one meter but I've changed it to 0 0.1 to match my minor grid line spacing so that's how you would set up your grid you hit OK for that to apply and then the next thing we want to look at is just to make sure that our grid snap is toggled on so when it's bold and has a darker gray hatch in the back that means it's enabled when it's disabled it will be the lighter gray and the bold text will disappear so you want to make sure your grid snap is on then there's also ortho if you right click on ortho there's that's where you can set your ortho angle so if you want to increase the um, ortho angle so that it's always orthogonal like 90 degrees or you can set that to 30 degrees or 15 degrees if you want more uh, control or you have curved spaces that you're trying to recreate. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is O snap. So when you have O snap on, you want to also make sure planar is on. When you have O snap on, you can uh, use the menu that pops up to decide wh where you want to snap to in addition to grid snap. So object snapping, uh, most times end to end is used or midpoint and center points. There might be instances where you might want to snap to perpendicular or intersection. For now, I'm going to keep it just endpoints since we're going to create simple rectilinear analytical models. So we're ready to get started. And in the pollination tab panel, you can go to add rooms, select draw room, and what used to be called polyline is now called freeform. So we can start with freeform to see what that looks like. And if you like to have a starting point or if you have coordinates, say for example you want to start at 000, you can type in that coordinate as your starting point. And then because we're in perspective, it's going to look um, a little bit uh, skewed. But if we go to top view, you can see, OK, now I have ortho at 90 degrees. Uh, and you can just draw a room. So if you have a 10 meter room by 10 meter by 10 meter, and then oh, you want to click and you want to type in 10 and hit Enter. And that automatically creates a room. So there's our room. The other way to do that, that was a square that was kind of painful to do it with the free form option. So if we click on draw room again, 
uh, go to uh, just go ahead and start drawing a room, it's going to automatically, the default option is always a square. Uh, if you don't change anything or when you just choose the um, draw room command. So you can find where you want it to be if it's a square. So that's a 15 foot square. And let's do that one more time so we can see how to do it rectilinearly. So draw a room. So if you want to do a rectangular room, you want to choose the three point option and not the two corner. And that will allow you to draw a room that's rectilinear. And we can go ahead and close it out on this side. If you want to change the height of any rooms, you can go ahead and click on height and say I want a, five, a four foot height and I'm going to do a three point and let's say it's 25, 20 feet. And there's our larger space. So there's a couple more commands when you're drawing a room. If you want to pick an elevation, say you have a change in elevation along your rooms instead of a change in height. So you can choose an elevation by point. So I'm going to go ahead and change my snap points. Say I'm going to snap to a center point. So my reference point will be a center point. And then I can start drawing a room from that point. So let's see if I want the room to be 25 and it will create a room from that elevation point. You can also go back to draw a room and if you don't want to do elevation by point, you can set an elevation by saying it's two feet off the ground or negative two feet. Um, as an easier way, sorry, two meters, and just go ahead and draw your next room and you can toggle between um, your viewports. And there we go. We have a room that's negative two meters 